Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In the last videos, we have dealt with the modeling of the synchronous machine. From a control engineer's perspective, the next natural question following from mathematical modeling, is how to realize manipulated control variables in applications. It has been well established that control of semiconductor switches, is the most efficient and convenient means to achieve control of AC machine drives. Control of the semiconductor switches is the most efficient and convenient means to achieve the control of power converters and machine drives. They act as the actuators in the implementation of the control systems, where the manipulated control inputs in the form of three-phase voltage signals, are realized by turning on and off the semiconductor switches. Depending on the application, a large variety of power electronic devices, different in types of semiconductor switches, construction topologies and concepts, have been developed. The common functionality of these devices, is to conduct power flow by varying the on-off duration of each switch. Among them, the two-level voltage source inverter, is the most widely adopted mechanism to control three-phase AC machines. Based on a DC power supply for controlling AC motors, the primary concern of using the semiconductor switches, for the motor applications is to create sinusoidal phase voltage signals, via the fundamental components of rectangular signals, that are produced by varying magnitudes and frequencies, through turning on off each power switch for a duration of time. One of the most widely adopted semiconductor power switches for the medium range power inverter, is the insulated gate bipolar transistor, IGBT, which offers the benefits of both MOSFET and bipolar switches. However, IGBT can only allow the current to flow in one direction, and hence a freewheeling diode in parallel is required, to conduct the current flow in the opposite direction. In the three-phase two-legs voltage source inverter for controlling AC machine, each leg of the inverter has two pairs, of such a combination, consisting of an IGBT switch and a freewheeling diode, where their middle point is linked to the load in AC motor. Here, the front-end rectifier is replaced by two DC sources, connected in series, and each supply offers half of the total DC bus voltage. For the simplification of analysis, it is sufficient to assume that the middle point, between two DC sources is referred to the ground. Thus, all the voltages can be represented with respect to the ground. For example, the neutral point voltage of AC motor is referred to as Vn with respect to the ground. Within each leg of an inverter, only one switch is allowed to turn on, while the other is off at any given time, to prevent short circuit. As a result, there are only add possible switching states, by turning on and off all the switches in the inverter. Since the states of upper and lower switches, within the same leg are complementary to each other, all eight switching states can be independently identified, by the states of the three upper switches as listed in this table. Among these, two switching state vectors V0 and V7 which represent the cases where, either all the upper or all the lower switches are turned on, leading to an open circuit, are called zero vector. In contrast, the other six states that form a closed circuit, are called active vector. Animation shows a specific sequencing of the eight states, where the active vectors rotate in discrete 60 degrees steps. resulting output voltages VA, VB, VC, are summarized in this table. It is seen that the three voltage signals VA, VB and VC generated from the voltage source inverter, via the semiconductor switches are in rectangular waveforms, with amplitude changes between plus VDC by 2 and minus VDC by 2. And, therefore, their fundamental components, are of primary interest in the realization of the three phase control signals light combinations and the resulting motor voltage and current directions are shown in this figures. Note that the output voltages are expressed with respect to the ground defined before. It follows that the three phase voltages with respect to the neutral point of the load are obtained by WM technology, originally developed in the telecommunication engineering community, has gained wide popularity and has been the subject of intensive research investigations, in the control of power electronics over the past several decades. With PWM technology and a voltage source inverter, the efficient control of the AC motor position, 
speed and torque by variable speed drive becomes possible. A wide variety of PWM generation techniques has been developed, which could be categorized into two broad classes, continuous PWM and discontinuous PWM. These methods could be implemented by two methodologies, carrier-based PWM and direct digital implementation. For a long time, the carrier-based PWM implementation, such as signed triangle intersection techniques, has dominated the industrial applications. With the development of fast digital signal processes, DSPs, direct digital implementation has also gained popularity in more recent years, of which the space vector modulator has been well recognized. Space vector PWM, as its name conveys, utilizes the concept of space vector, and its geometrical features to derive the on-off time duration for each switch. Similar to the definition of MMF space vector in the last videos, the space vector of three-phase reference voltage is defined as If a balanced three-phase voltage is employed, then this vector is a rotating vector with electrical speed omega e, which is the frequency of sinusoidal signal. The modulation of the desired space vector vs stern is obtained by the time average of its two nearest active vectors, and a zero vector, either v0 or v7. Taking the first sector for example, as illustrated in this figure, the vector vs stern could be modulated with the time average of the active vector v1, and v2 within one sampling period ts by t1 and t2 are the duration of on time for the active vectors v1 and v2 respectively. The relationship between the modulated vector vs stern, and two nearest active vectors is obtained, by applying the geometric properties of the triangle. It implies the duty cycle ratio of each active vector is where the length of each active vector is used. It follows that the duration of the zero vector applied is the remaining time of the sampling period. Since the hexagon has six-fold symmetry, the geometrical method discussed can be used for the other five sectors, as well by rotating the modulation vector by the conventional SVPWM symmetrically distributes the four switching vectors two active vectors and two zero vectors, within one sampling time, as shown in this figure. Such an arrangement offers the benefits of fixed switching frequency and better harmonics reduction performance. Maximum amplitude of the three-phase voltage signals, to be realized by the space vector modulation technique as seen from this figure is. To ensure that the modulation is within the linear modulation range, it requires that voltages in the alpha, beta and dq reference frame satisfy. That's why we used this constraints in the last video for the PMSM simulation. This animation illustrates what we have discussed. Next videos of this playlist are devoted to discussing the design of PI controllers for current control 
Cascade Velocity Control, and Cascade Position Control. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to get video updates.